Hello everyone, my name is Chance Sweeney, and this is going to be my Armor 3 Eden Editor introduction tutorial. I am by no means an expert of the Eden Editor, and I am still learning myself, but I wanted to make this tutorial for anyone who is starting off in the Editor and needs some guidance. I will be showing you some things I certainly wish I knew when I was starting off in this Editor. First things first, I want to take a look at the interface. Some quick things that will be very helpful for us. On the left, we have the Entities tab. This is simply a list of all the assets or objects or units we have placed into the scene. Right now it is empty, because we have placed nothing. In the Locations tab, these are simply the cities on the map. Currently I am using Malden. You can double click them to quickly go to them. In the Scenario tab, this will be used for saving files, opening ones we're already working on, or publishing or exporting them. The edit and view tab we won't be using, attributes tab we will be using to edit some of our generic game files, specifically the multiplayer, but we will not be taking a look at this right now. We could also be using the play tab in order to play test our map. On the right side we have our asset list. This is going to be a list of all the objects, infantry units, props, all kinds of different things we can use to make our own mission. Now there are six different tabs up at the top. The first one is the basic objects. We have five different subsections for this as well. The first one is blue four, then op four, independent, civilian, and props. So this is pretty self-explanatory. The, the blue four will be allied units, and this is going to be all units, helicopters, infantry, tanks, all that stuff. These will always have AI in them. Op4 is the exact opposite, these will always be enemy AI, then we also have independent and civilian as well as props. And one of the great functionalities of this is the search tab. Say I wanted to build a military base, I could simply search military and it will bring me up a bunch of military assets. Military base like assets. And if we wanted to place it, we just simply click, left click and then go to our scene and left click again. We can move it around. If we hold shift, we can change the angle. If we hold shift and click, sorry, if we hold alt and click, we can change the altitude of it and so on. And if we click delete, it takes very different from the scene. But we also have five other tabs here. The compositions tab is the same as objects, but it's for groups of objects. To make things easier for whoever is editing this mission, you can have preset squads. <clears throat> so if I wanted to put down an air defense team, an enemy air defense team, I can do that. There are plenty of these available in this tab as well as props. P group props are essentially pre-built bases almost. There's a lot of them in here, but you can, if you just wanted a simple outpost of some sort, you can simply drag and drop one out. Bam, you have a military outpost. There's a bunch of other presets in here, like roadblocks and other stuff. We also have the triggers tab. We'll be using this for some functionality in our mission. We have a waypoints tab. This is simply for adding um, movement commands to units, but there's also a different way of using this. And systems is also for functionality. We will be using this later on. So first things first, we need to be able to play our mission. So this is very simple. All we need to do is put down any one of these blue four units. Now if you double click the unit or the object, you will go into its attributes. We will be using this a lot for several different things. For now, we'd want to make sure the player and playable is checkmarked. Doing so will make this a playable unit. We can also add more of these guys in if we want more players for a multiplayer mission. If we double click these, we want to make sure they are playable. And once you export this to multiplayer mission, these will be available as open slots for your friends. But we won't, we'll just get rid of them for now because we won't be using them. So now that we have our player, we can press enter and bam, we are in our map. Press escape, you can return to the editor, and that is how you test things out. There's also several other things you can do with this, this editor I mean. If you press M, you can go to the map, 
you can right click specific spots and go to them and boom you'll travel your camera will travel there you can also click specific units and go straight to them or objects this is very great for, this is wonderful for navigating the map quickly because these maps are huge in this R map so now we're going to take a look at some of the functions functions are essentially ready-made scripts that are built into the engine now this engine has a lot of scripting involved but to start off I will be giving you guys some preset functions that will help us build our level first things first we want an arsenal an arsenal essentially allows us to customize our own loadouts this is especially important to have in a multiplayer level so I'm gonna go to props I'm gonna get us an ammo box of some sort this one looks good to me and we're going to be using this for our arsenal. If we double click the object, we'll open up the attributes and we will see this big init box. Essentially, this will initialize some kind of script upon starting the game. This is where we will put our code or script in order to call a function. That function is call bis underscore fnc underscore arsenal. But we need, but this function requires some parameters. This means it needs some kind of variables in order to work. So if we want to make this into an arsenal box, we need to do this. Ammo box init in quotes, comma, bracket, ammo box, comma, true, bracket, bracket, space. With this simple code, the arsenal should work. But it's not going to. If I press enter and walk up to the box, it's not going to work. That's because we didn't set the variable name. Variable names are very important when it comes to adding functionality to a level. The variable name is quite important to understand because we can use the variable name to call this object into different scripts. This means if we were to set this to ammo box, we can call it into this function and make it into an arsenal. So now, since we named it ammo box, <coughs> it should work. Now, we have a functioning arsenal. We can use it to open up the arsenal, customize our gear, load our own loadouts, and so on. Now there's a few other things we need before we can start building out our own mission. So the first thing you want is a respawn point. So if we just place on a respawn point, we need to open up the attributes and we need to name this respawn underscore west and set it to blue four. This will serve as the respawn point of the mission. So whenever someone dies, they will have to respawn here. But there's one other thing we need to do to get this to work. If we go to attributes, like I mentioned earlier, and go to multiplayer, we can change the respawn. But And we want it to respawn on a custom position. And we can set the delay to 10. Now we have our, and we already have a custom position in the game. So now it should work. This tab is also used for plenty of other things for specifically for your mission file, if you want to change the game mode, minimum to maximum players, summary, if you want to enable or disable AI, and so on. Now that we have a respawn, we can start building out our mission. So we need to give the player some kind of task. We can do this by using create task. If we put this into the mission, double click it, we can edit it, set it to blue four, give it a title, do a thing, Go call we'll name the marker go do thing. Set it to assigned. We will set the destination to module position. This will mean that means the marker will be set wherever we placed this module. And we can also change the icon on the map. We'll just change it to help. If we click OK and go into game it should assign us a task. <coughs> if 
open up our map, bam, there's the task. But what if we don't want the task to be assigned immediately on play? What if we want something to trigger the task? Well, we can put a trigger down. Triggers essentially can activate functions or scripts depending on some variable, some kind of activation. One way to do this is by entering the trigger zone. So if we give it a radius, then when something happens to the zone, it will activate. We're going to set this to blue 4, so a blue 4 can activate it. Keep the condition as this. We can set it to trigger 1, so the variable name, in case we want to call it. Press OK. And we also want to sync this to create task. Now, the task will not automatically assign upon entering the mission, but once this trigger is activated. And to activate that trigger, we need to walk into the trigger zone. So now, if we walk into the trigger zone, the task will be assigned. This is just one of many ways in order to use triggers. But we also want a way to complete this task. So we also have set task state. If we pl place this down, we can succeed a task or complete a task by syncing it to that, syncing it to the create task. But we need some way for this to activate. So we're gonna put down another trigger and we're gonna sync this trigger to set task state. But I want, a, I want a different way to trigger this trigger. So we're going to make it like a little assassination mission. I want this task to complete once I kill a certain enemy. So we're going to place down a uh, CSAT unit. We're going to go into his attributes. And we're going we're gonna to handcuff him and make him surrender real quick just so he doesn't shoot back at us. But we, also, we need to give him a name. So we're going to name him Target1. Press OK. And now we need to link him to this trigger somehow. So if you open up the trigger, you will notice the condition line. By default, it is set to this, meaning the trigger will, the condition is itself. But we can change this condition to something else. So if we do exclamation point alive space target one, then this trigger will activate once this target is no longer alive. And we do not even need to sync it. So now we have a different type of trigger that can succeed our mission or our task. So let's go get our task. <coughs> Kill this soldier. Bam, our task has been completed. This is just two of the many ways you can use triggers in order to add some kind of functionality to your level. But we, what if we want to actually end the mission itself? This is where I'll be showing you another function, the end mission function. So instead of end task state, we're going to open up the trigger. So call bis underscore fnc underscore end mission. This function also requires some parameters, five to be exact. The first one is a string, which is, will be the name of this end mission. The next one is a boolean, which will determine whether or not this is ending in a victory or a failure. So we're going to call this mission completed, comma, make sure that's in quotations, comma, if we do want it to be a victory, comma, the fade type, which is going to determine what kind of closing shot the game ends with. I'm just going to do true because that will set it to the default. The next variable is whether or not it'll play music. We do want the music. And the last one is for whether or not it'll complete all the tasks. We also want that enabled. So now, put a semicolon at the end there. Now once we kill this guy, it should completely end the mission. So first I'm gonna go get the task. Do your thing. Shoot this guy. Bam, mission completed. And that will conclude this intro to Eden Editor for Arma 3. I hope you guys enjoyed it and hope you found it helpful. Thank you and see you next time.